Hello. Today's lecture will cover tutorial 3C and a problem similar to some of the things you will have to do on the homework. So first, let's start Alice and go through tutorial 3C. This starts on page 84. We're supposed to start with a grass template, so I'll start with that. And let's look through the objects. Go to the vehicles folder. And here are some of the vehicles we have. Quite a wide selection. And now, let's start a new world and let's change our minds. Instead of the grass template, use the water template. Now our goal is to populate this world with some stuff that makes it look more realistic. This is the world that we're going to be flying around in. So here's the sailboat. Let's move that. Well, not that far off in the distance. Um, hmm, that's funny. Goal is to move it. I think this is just a glitch with my version of Alice. But if this happens to you, just move it a little bit at a time. I think what happens is the mouse cursor gets to the top of the screen and that makes it go away. Uh, go backwards really quickly. So let's add that. And now, Toriel says to go to the Environments folder and add some islands. So let's do that. So we've got some interior settings, and we've also got this island right here. Here's another type of island. This one's got a palm tree on it. Finally, let's put our seaplane. into this environment. So again, if you run into that glitch that I ran into where it all of a sudden goes a really long distance away from you, just move it a little bit at a time. And here's our seaplane. The main attraction of this world. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm gonna just move it so it's facing this way and a little further away. So we're done adding objects to our world. We've got a nice little environment here. And now we're going to start programming. And what we're going to do is first get rid of this event. World at my first method, we don't need it. We don't need, need world at my first method to exist at all for purposes of the tutorial. But go ahead and keep it in in there actually. Not the event, but the method, so that you can put comments in your fine in your final project. you know, this this type of comment. I'm going to ask you for a, a few more comments, too. So the event we're going to make is, while the world is running, we're going to make the seaplane move. So to get to while the world is running, first you do select when the world starts from the menu and then you change it to while the world is running. And during while the world is running you make the seaplane move forward one meter. And we want to select the style as abruptly, because s somewhat counterintuitively, the plane moves smoothly when you select the abrupt style. If you don't select abruptly, if you select gently, it does like this. So that's obviously much inferior to the abrupt style. Turn to page 86 now. We've just created that event. And so now we need to create the controls. To create the controls, we're going to need four more events. So you might think, you know, let the mouse move objects Sorry, that's not the right, but you might think let arrow keys move seaplane. You might think that would work, but that that doesn't let us go up and down. See? When we press up it goes forward and when we press back it goes backwards. We can't fly like this. We can't make the plane turn up. So we're going to need to write our own. We, we can't use this built-in method. So our events are going to be like follows in step number six. Left arrow turns the plane left, right arrow turns it right, down makes it turn down, and up makes it turn up. And the turn method has two parameters, the direction and the amount. So you can't turn something up, but if you turn forward and backward, your orientation will change to up or down. So that will work. Now each time we press one of these keys, we need to select how much it's going to turn. Directions say to use one eighth of a revolution, equivalent to 45 degrees. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So new event, when a key is typed, when the left arrow key is typed, what we want to do is turn the C plane left one quarter revolution. Except then we need to select um, one eighth revolution. Now for the right arrow, and this is going to be fairly formulaic. Now, when right arrow is typed, turn the C plane right one eighth revolutions. Up is next when a key is typed, when the up arrow key is typed we're going to I'm going to go ahead and just do a copy paste here and just change this to forward the final event is when down is typed and again I'm going to copy from the clipboard it's just faster since these are fairly similar statements, turn backward one quarter revolution. Now, specification here says that we need to be able to find the seaplane if it goes off the camera. So let's make another event. When a key is typed, when spacebar is typed make the camera point at the seaplane. So we're going to go here, camera point at seaplane. So let's go ahead and play this and see what we have so far. So that press down I'm pressing up and it's working but when I press down it doesn't work So I wonder why that is. Ah. It's because I didn't select the right thing here. So this is what's called a bug. Happens in every program. The up arrow key wasn't right, and so weird things happened when I, I pressed various keys. So now it's working correctly. Real planes can't really do that, but you know, this is an entire uh, supposed to be completely realistic. It's hard for me to remember that down makes it go down and up makes it go up because real planes have some ki kind of counterintuitive controls with that, at least in a flight simulator I used a long time ago. So it's moving. It's moving pretty slowly. But let's 
let's have it move off screen so we can test the final thing. I want to be able to make it this it move faster. You'll do that later. You'll you're gonna part of your homework is to add a speed control. Alright, now I'm gonna press spacebar. And there's our plane. So that works. So everything is working as it should. So let's move on. So we're on now, we've gone through pages 87 and 88, and 89, so we're actually, we're actually done. So I am going to make this, say, 5 meters to make this go a little faster just so that I can test it easier. And to motivate you to add that speed control. There's a lot of uh, there are a lot of ways that this can be improved. This was the tutorial, but exercises four for through seven, you're going to change some of this stuff so that the seaplane works better. But for now, we're done here. So, what we're going to do next. What we're going to do next is create a moon rover. And the stuff that we're going to do with this moon rover analogizes fairly well to the stuff you're going to need to do on the homework. So we're going to add a control to speed up, slow down, and turn the moon rover. We're going to make the panel attachment continuously spin. The turn should be smooth. And we're going to have a special command to make the robot, the moon rover, jump. So just take a look at that. These are our specifications. Think about how you might do that. And I encourage you to pause this presentation periodically and try to think for yourself how how we're going to accomplish these things. Because I think you'll get the most out of this lecture if you approach it like that. So let's get started. Start a new world. I'm not going to save the seaplane world. And before we can do anything, we have to add a moon rover. There is a moon rover in Alice somewhere. That's uh that's E T. Or looks like E T. Alright, Moon Rover is not here. So we're gonna have to look around for it a little more. Space. The final frontier. Now here's a rover, but it doesn't have a panel attachment, and I wanted one that had a panel attachment that we could make spin. So let's see if there's another one that has something we can make spin on it. 
panel attachment. Yeah. So instead of the mo instead of the rover, we're going to work with the Hyperion robot class object. The Hyperion robot object, and we're going to make it move around and spin and things like that. I'm not going to make you make the wheels spin because that would be too hard. So we've got the rover here. There's no there's nothing else on the moon. I mean, we could put other stuff on the moon if we wanted to. I guess let's put an, put an astronaut on the moon. Move him. Move him over here. Back in the distance a little ways. And maybe, I guess, let's put a satellite up in space. Let's put it up in space. Need to do this. Now I'm going to turn it around a little bit. I'm going to do like that so we get a better angle. Satellite dish, yeah, why not? And I didn't have the arrow control, so didn't do what I wanted when I tried to make it go back. Alright, so now we, we've got... Let's move the satellite just a little bit. We've got some stuff in our world now with our moon rover. So let's go ahead and get programming. Let's look at what we need to do. We need to have controls to speed up, slow down, and turn the moon rover. Well, let's go ahead and make the controls to speed to to do this first. So we need to turn so it should be moving. We're again going to get rid of the when the world starts event here and add a new event and select while the world is running. And we're going to make the Hyperion robot move forward one meter. So now when we start our world it moves. But it's moving kind of it's not moving very well. It's stopping and starting so just like before let's change the style to abruptly. And that looks a lot better. So now we need our controls. So again we need in this case the rover can't fly so we don't need up and down but we do need left and right. So when the left arrow is typed let's make it turn left one-eighth revolutions. And now I copy this to the clipboard, paste it, change this to right, and change this to right. So now let's go ahead and play this. And he's moving now. Up and down don't work because we didn't code them because it can't fly. But it turns like it's supposed to. However, third requirement here is that the turns should be smooth. So in order to make the turns smooth, 
we need to change these events to while a key is pressed. While the key is pressed, we're going to make the robot turn left one eighth revolution so that it turns approximately the same amount. And when the right arrow key is pressed, we're going to make him turn right one eighth revolution. So now let's play that, play this and make that happen. Hmm, not quite, because it's stopping and starting. Well, how did we solve that before? Think about, think about what we might need to do. Okay, what we need to do is change the style here to abruptly. And now the turn should be smooth. Yep, that's pretty smooth. Let's not run over the astronaut. So we're off to a good start here. So let's go back and take a look at what we need to do. Controls to speed up and slow down the moon rover. Alright, this is by far the hardest thing to do, so why don't you think about that for a little while, how we might accomplish this. Make it speed up and slow down. If you look on the homework number seven, it gives you a lot of hints. So we need to make an object variable for the seaplane. These are also called properties. I'm sorry, the Hyperion robot. You're going to need to do it for the seaplane. The properties of the Hyperion robot, we can create a new variable here and call it speed. So let's go ahead and follow those directions. And what should what should it be? Well, speed is a number. It's meters per second. So is there a better type for it in here? No, it th there's no speed type. It's just speed is just a number. And let's start it out with a value of 1 because that's 1 meter per um, per time step is how, how fast we're making the Hyperion robot go. So we've got speed now. We've got the speed, a speed variable. But it's not used anywhere and we don't have any controls for it. So let's put the controls for it first because that's easy. When the world runs, when you press a key, we're going to speed it up. We're going to make the robot speed up. We're going to make this speed variable increase in value. So we'll need a new event when a key is typed. And let's say let's use W to speed it up. And so we're going to need to now put a mathematical formula here. Think about what you might need to put here. Think about how we're going to increase the speed by 1. That's what we want to do. We want to increase the speed by 1 when W is typed. So think about how to do that. Pause it here and think about it. All right, I'll give you a hint. It's going to be an equation. You're going to drag the, this tile over here. And now think about what we need to put here. Well, it's obvious once you've dragged it over here. Increment Hyperion robot dot speed by one. So that's that's easy. Now, if it were any value other than one we would have to choose set value to Hyperion robot dot speed 
and then we would need to go down here and select from math plus and then the value to increase it so if we were going to increase the speed by two every time you would need to put plus two here but since it's one we can use the special increment instruction so to get that back put speed here increment it by one now when s is typed what I'm gonna say is we're gonna decrease the speed by one so this is exactly what this is exactly analogous to what we just did select the letter S decrement speed by one and we're good now are we done do you think this will do it think about it think about whether you think we're done or not and if we're not done think about what we need to do think about what's left to do all right we're not done so when we do this I'm making the moon rover go around and now I'm gonna type W a whole bunch and look the speeds increasing and I'm gonna type s by the way you can make the robot go backwards by giving it a negative speed or you should be able to and when it's zero it shouldn't be moving at all but obviously it is so this control does absolutely nothing why is that All right, pause here, think about why is that, take a guess, and then I'll give you a hint. All right, hint, you need to do something with this instruction. This instruction is wrong. So, so take another guess, if you didn't get, get to where it was this instruction. All right, what's wrong here is that while the world is running, this event moves the Hyperion robot forward one meter every time step. If So the speed is fixed at one meter because that's how much it's moving each time step. If we want this control here to control the speed, we need to make this the Hyperion robot move forward speed meters each time step. So to do that, what do you think we need to do? Okay, what we need to do, we need to take this speed control and drop it right here. Remember, variables can stand in for a value of their type. So you need to move forward some number of meters while well, speed is a numeric variable so it can stand in for that you can use you can say move forward speed meters instead of just one you, you don't have to use a constant like just a number here you can use something that represents a number like x and in this case x is speed so now let's take a look all right. Turning the robot around. And now I'm going to press W. Okay, I'm going a little too fast to be practical here, so I'm going to stop and start over. All right, it's going fast now. Now I'm going to slow it down. All right, it's at a dead stop. Now I can make it go backwards. Now I can make it go forwards again. All 
Now we could add a control just like we did before to make it so that when you press spacebar the camera points at it. So let's go ahead and do that since it's not too hard. It might help with our testing. It wasn't part of the specification, wasn't part of you weren't asked to do it, but it's a nice thing to do. So when a key is typed, when spacebar is typed, camera I had to click the methods thing here because we were in the properties tab. Point at the Hyperion robot. So now let's check and make sure that works. Alright. Slowed it down a little now. Oh, there's our satellite dish. So we're starting to get back to the original location. And I stopped it. <coughs> so that works pretty well. So far we're doing well. And we're completely <coughs> done with numbers one and three. <coughs> Excuse me. So now let's look at this one. The panel attachment should continuously spin. Why is that in here? Well, because in your homework you have a question to make the propeller spin. So here we're going to make the panel attachment spin. It's going to be done similar to how you're going to do it in your homework. So the panel attachment is part of the rover. It's an object part. And if the panel attachment spins continuously, we need a while the world is running event. As long as the world is running, we want that panel attachment to spin at some constant speed. So while it's running, let's make the panel attachment turn left one eighth revolution and if you remember in order to make it not stop and start we need to say abruptly alright so I stopped it so that we can look at the panel attachment spinning And that looks pretty good. We've got our panel attachment spinning. So let's go ahead and move it forward. And the panel attachment keeps spinning. Now I made it go backwards. Stop it. Now, you'll have to, to experiment. There's even a hint here. Um, to make the When you make the propeller spin, do you need to make it turn or roll? You might need to make the propeller roll instead of turn. But just try both, and whichever one, you know, looks normal, that's the one you use. So that makes us done with number three. So finally, last thing we want to do with this robot is add a special command to make the robot jump. So let's say I'm going to choose for my special command when somebody presses J for jump. When J is typed, 
we're going to make him jump. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to need to do we're going to need to make him move up and then move down. We're going to need to make the robot move up and then down. So, do in order. This is a way to do more than one thing in an event. When J is pressed to do in order, we want to move the whole robot, not just the panel attachment, up and let's say one meter. And then after that, we want to move the Hyperion robot back down. What goes up must come down. So let's see how this works now. Alright, J. How is it jumping? I don't know. Just is. Alright. So that is it. We've done all four things here. Now, th the analog to the jump is the barrel roll question, of course. And you're going to do a barrel roll differently than this. But this is the format. When some key is typed, make it do a barrel roll. Maybe you want to use B for the bar barrel roll instead of J. You can choose whatever key you want. Just please tell me in your comments which key you chose. All right, so I'm going to post this robot world, robot moon world, on Georgia View so that you can look at it, study it, if you want. And that is all for today.